Arrow, how are you? Absolutely fantastic. How are you guys today? I'm feeling sharp, feeling feeling straight as an arrow. There you go. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> I got to tell you, I have been a fan of Naked and Afraid since day one. And the reason why is because it teaches me as an RVer how to go out there and, and don't just stop the first wall that you meet. You've got you've to plan things out and you've got to figure things out. So you guys, in my eyes, are heroes because you don't stop. I mean, in a survival situation, <laughs> you don't have the option of stopping. You've got to just keep going. If you if you stop it, means you didn't make it. <laughs> oh boy, isn't that the truth? <laughs> when when you bring it up that way with with survival mode, um, you know, being from Montana, I mean, we lived in the wild out there, and and I always had that fear of what if something went horribly wrong in this country? Who would teach us how to survive? And and that's why I think I'm really connected to Naked and Afraid because you do teach people uh, ways to get around those things. Oh, definitely. It's a, that's a, it's a dying trait, um, is to be self-sufficient nowadays. And because of that, it is one of those things that it, it inspires me to go out and push limits is because if I can, if I can, you know, get that little spark of inspiration for someone to be self-sufficient, then, you know, that is huge because the more that we have in this world, the better it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, I've been self taught every step of the way doing my off-grid adventure, and I've been out here for five years now, and moving off-grid, being self-sufficient, has been the best decision of my life. I was going to ask you about being off-grid, because even Jesse Ventura will tell you that being off-grid is where, where you know, happiness really, truly lives. But, but Sarah, you, we, we can see you. I mean, what's it like to be in front of us when you're off-grid? Um, <laughs> we had some technical difficulties this morning, um, but we've managed to... Uh, you know, push past that. We are surviving, and uh, now I'm here talking to you guys. So it's been an adventure. Matt, you know, one of the things, and and this really kind of goes back to when when you were saying straight as an arrow. You're a marksman, dude. You you know how to use that bow and arrow. Now, when you're out there in the wild, can you turn anything into a bow and arrow? Do you have those skills? Oh, definitely. It's a you know, I teach survival, but I actually you know, I've actually mastered the art of making primitive weaponry as well as. You know, bow and arrow, the atlatl, the rock sling. Um, you know, for me, it's those are still their items. But what you really have to tune in is the skills with those items. It uh, because a, one thing a bow doesn't do is doesn't hunt for you. Right. There's no passive way for it to work. So it uh, it really does involve learning how to hunt, learning the animals, and because of that, it actually makes me continue to grow while I'm doing any of these challenges 45 days in the gorge in africa and you're teamed up with a partner my god you better trust that partner because if if, if one of you taps out boom you're both out <laughs> yeah it's a uh, it is it's just a whole different ball game you know it's just 45 days to be the last one standing hundred thousand dollar cash prize that's already huge but now you know that your first 21 days you're partnered with someone that you didn't pick, yep. but that you have to survive with. And <laughs> it's a, uh, it, every single, every single survival has had a bit of a pucker up moment <laughs> when, uh, when they were the rules on that one. It's a whole different kind of adaptability because you're not just having to adapt to your environment. You're also having to adapt to a completely unheard of social situation in the realm of naked and afraid. And that is that you have to rely on your partner. You know what's really interesting about Naked and Afraid is is that sure when we when people first discover the show it's it's like oh my god they're naked but then when you really get into the show the storylines and how you're able to survive out there but the question this season would have to be is your mind on the $100,000 to get you through the storm or is your mind into hey I'm going to make it to day number 45 because once I get away from here I'm going to change other people's lives on the other side of the planet you know, for me, for me personally, I took it on as how can I, and you know, empower people's passions yes. while I'm out there. It, uh, for me, the hundred thousand dollars is not my main goal. It would never would be, it's just not how I operate, but I'll tell you what, you're going to see a lot of survivalists out there that, uh, that they're for the money. They're for that big, that big thing. So there's going to be, there's going to be, you know, sabotage. There's going to be <laughs> a lot of different play involved and it's a uh, it's surviving the elements and surviving your peers for sure what about you sarah oh 
uh, that's a good question. You know, being off grid, I've pretty much provided everything that I need in my life for myself. So the money was not a huge motivating factor, but uh, the adventure certainly was. And that for me is always something that has been a motivating factor in my life. Um, I grew up traveling the world and being able to go to amazing places like the Oribe Gorge there in Africa is really where I find a lot of um you know, personal growth. And that was a huge motivating factor. What inspires you the most that being in that jungle or in that gorge at night or in the daytime? Because at night, I, I swear it's like a whole different universe and a, and a whole new layer of animals that are watching you. During the night, that's when the predators come out. That's when you become closer to being prey. But in the daytime, you are also, you can get complacent. You can get uh, to where you, you're not paying attention and, uh, and that's when the little things will get you. And I'll tell you, out there, it uh, without a doubt, if if you don't pay attention to every little thing, it uh, something will find a way to take you out. Now, growing up in the state of Montana, we had a lot of farmland, and we and we worked off that land. Uh, my father used to tell me all the time, "You can eat dirt and survive." Do you believe in that? Because I mean, you've been there, and you, you've had you've had to survive somehow, some way. <laughs> you know, I love that phrase that you can eat dirt, and survive. It's a uh, it's essentially a mindset that tells you that if you're willing to to embrace the you know the worst situation that if you if you do something to improve it you're going to make it Man. and uh, and because of that it uh you know you definitely you were able to eat dirt it, uh, <laughs> you'll uh, have the mindset to make it well congratulations on Naked and Afraid this brand new season is going to be exciting I can't wait to see the tap outs I can't wait to see the the sabotage that's going to take place because I know I'm going to be yelling at my flat screen and 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 it, you know it's coming from you guys. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're striving for chaos here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys be brilliant today, okay? Are you? Thank you. Me too.